Good afternoon, everyone. This is the doctor. It's another beautiful but rainy day out here in the Pacific Northwest. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the July sneak peek. For those of you that have watched my sneak peek videos before, you probably know that since Venera has been delayed, we are going to be getting Venera. So, of course, as we look into the events that are coming up, it's going to be a little bit of a rehash. Y'all are going to know that White Day's raid is going to be coming. You also know that Venera is also going to be coming out. What you might not know, though, is that along with White Day, we're going to be getting four new cards. We're also going to be getting a Etre event, and I hope a new unit will be coming out with the Etre event, and we'll talk about that as well. There's also going to be the Golden Sword and Golden Axe event coming back, so if you haven't plus fived that, now is going to be your opportunity. Taking a look at the Venera event, for those of you, if you haven't watched my video already detailing what's going on, we are going to be getting a free new unit, uh, Tyrell down here, Dario, very powerful Spellblade unit, Venera, very powerful Evasion unit, that's all going to be coming out, not this coming week, but the week after. Many of you probably have Dagger Books, and that's because the Mage Masher event is also going to be coming out. Venera, a primary Dagger user, is going to get great use out of the Mage Masher. We're going to have a token shop for the event as well. And we are going to be getting Tyrell's TMR for free since all of Tyrell's shards are available from the token event. Tyrell's TMR actually pretty good. In my previous video, I didn't highlight how good it might be for newer players or free-to-play players. It is going to be a TMR that gives access to accuracy and critical hit, and it's going to give substantially more than, say, Etre's TMR. It's probably one of the better free-to-play access TMRs that newer players are going to have access to, and there's even some veteran players who might find it beneficial as well. Taking a look at the White Day Raid, we are going to get four new cards, and without further delay, let's hop in and talk about the cards and the new espers that are going to be coming out. We are going to get the Two-Headed Dragon, also an esper, HP 300, attack 180, magic 18, dark attack plus 10, and max damage plus 2500. That max damage plus 2500, very powerful in raid content. If you can imagine a unit like Lucia doing chain damage, if you are already at cap chain damage and you're using quadruple shot, that's an additional 10,000 damage or an additional 25% damage. Very powerful. The effect of dark attack plus 10 is a little unfortunate, but it is still very good in raid content. Jealous Magician, kind of a niche unit here or a niche card. HP 242, attack 46, magic 126. Cast time minus 100, defense minus 5. I think a lot of the times we don't see cast time minus spells in effect very much. Even when we have a party-wide cast time minus card, we very rarely see it. And the party effect on here is magic plus 30%. Keep in mind this is going to be magic, the base magic stat of the unit you're using. Not magic attack plus, so it's not going to be like Trousseau. And it's going to modify your damage significantly less. So we are probably not going to see the Jealous Magician in play much. There are other cards that do this better, and there are other cards that have better single unit effects on them as well. There could be a niche for this somewhere. However, I'm not sure that stacking cast time minus is going to be a huge deal. Untrue Pledge, True Soul. This is a card that I'm going to say never use. And the reason I'm going to say never use is it seems like a waste of resources to me. There are many cards that add slashing attack up with a better party ability than evasion plus 10. Evasion plus 10 is so bad in comparison to every other evasion card in the game that I think this card as a party ability is moot. I think the slashing attack plus 15 is, you know, it's, it's good for a single unit effect but keep in mind this is if the cards maxed out i really don't think this card is going to be viable i think you would get a lot more benefit out of almost any other card with slashing attack on it than this card so overall i'm going to say untrue pledge true soul 
pretty garbage card, and I would say this is the card you do not want to pull. Cost for being ostentatious is a very unique card. It has HP 272, attack 84, magic 37, max damage plus 1264, and light killer plus 17. You are going to be able to buy the shards for this in the shop from the white flan raid. So it's going to be light killer plus 17. Let's just reflect on a moment. There are a lot of light units. There's Ramza, there is Engelbert, there is Warrior of Light coming in the near future. There's so many light units that are mainstream that this could be effective against. But the single unit effect, again, very similar to Untrue Pledge, max damage plus 1,264, it's really not great. If you are doing anything besides PvE content, you are probably not ever going to hit the damage cap. And so I think this card really lies in the raid scene, in fighting bosses and chaining. And I think this card is good for PvE content. I think it would be great to stack this card with Two-Headed Dragon, and then you could deal 37% more damage if you're hitting the damage cap on your chains. However, overall, I think PvE, PvE is going to be where this card shines, right? You want to take it onto the floor and tower with all the light units. That's where it's really going to shine. If there's a raid with a light elemental unit, that's where it's going to shine. So overall, I would say don't get too excited for cost for being ostentatious, but do know that it does have a niche. It can be used, and you are going to be able to utilize it if you pull it. Let's talk about Two-Headed Dragon, the Esper. And there's one unit I think of when I think of Two-Headed Dragon, and that's Stern. And the reason I think that is he's going to be the first Esper to add increases critical damage to the ability board. He also has increases attack. He has increased slash resistance. So that's all of the things that a unit like Stern would want. He also has increased evasion up here. He has access to Dark Killer and Dragon Killer. Not extremely relevant. He does, though, have access to a huge amount of accuracy on the right side of his board. You can see over here at plus three, plus three, plus four, so it's plus 15 accuracy. Next to Tetra Sylphid, he is the highest accuracy Esper that you can get. So if you are looking to do some type of an accuracy build, he would definitely be the way to go as well if you didn't pull Tetra Sylphid. I really think, though, you're going to be going for that critical damage. You're going to go for increased attack. You're going to go for slash attack. Ninjas would be another great unit that this could all go on where they have their guaranteed critical hit. So again, something to think about. Make sure you check out WarTheVisionsCalc.com for all of the detailed stats. And you do see he has HP 871, TP 33, AP 40, Attack 108, Magic 36, Agility 10, Dexterity 52, and Luck 63. Going to make him a very powerful offensive and also survivable Esper to equip. Finally, when we do come up against the White Flan, if you haven't seen my specific video on it, definitely go check it out. He is going to have a weakness to 20% Darkness and 10% Slashing. That really means you can just bring any Dark Slashing unit in and hopefully be able to Blitz it down. Specifically, I'm thinking Gafgarion, Venera, Stern. It's all going to get melted. You should be just fine. For the Etri event, I'm dying for Christmas Ramada. I'm dying for Christmas Mashery. I want them so bad. And what I want more than anything is Christmas in July. And I've said it so many times. And so many people are like, Dr. Diggs, they're never going to do Christmas in July. But you need to know that Christmas Ramada was on the banner with Etre, or not with Etre, but with all of the units originally in the Etre event in JP. And when the Etre event came back in JP, Christmas Ramada was there as well. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we get Christmas Ramada on the Etre rerun. Crossing my fingers, and I am hoping. We're also going to see the return of the Golden Axe Golden Blade event, so you can farm that Golden Sword plus 5, which I know I need to finish off some books for. And finally, at the end of the month, the beginning of August, we are going to see Warrior of Light and War Mech. And I know a lot of you guys are excited for Warrior of Light. I know he is the unit you all have been waiting and hoarding for. I think I'll be pulling very hard for him, and I am very excited for him. If you guys do like the type of content in this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are trying to hit 5,000 subscribers right now. 
make sure you leave a comment down in the YouTube section and come join our Discord, dig.gs slash Discord. We are a pretty cool community and we are very warm and welcoming. We're not too hostile, not too toxic. You don't have to worry too much about us. I do stream every night except for Mondays and Thursdays. So if you're not doing anything tonight, if you're going to be stuck inside because of COVID for July 4th, come join us. We will be doing a special July 4th stream. And tonight is Pizza Friday on stream, if you didn't know. So if you've got pizza, make sure you heat it up and come join us. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a great rest of your night.